Nadia Frank was born in 1980 in Laurel, Germany. Her work operates on the edge between painting, sculpture, and architectural environments. Her recent site-specific installations deal with transience, the process of making, and the manner in which color interacts with space. She received her diploma in fine arts with honors from the Hochschule für Bildende Künste in Hamburg, Germany in 2008. She's exhibited internationally in numerous, numerous solio exhibitions, uh, 401 Contemporary Berlin, London, Germany, Margini Arte, Contemporanea in Massa, Italy, Galleria Condrati in Hamburg, Germany, and in group exhibitions, Kunst und Axtellungshalle der Bundesrepublik Deutschland, Bonn, Germany, the Kunstverein in Hamburg, Germany, in Silvershed in New York, among others. I started as a very traditional painter, and I became really abstract, and then eventually kind of didn't use canvases anymore as my media, but I'm s I was still kind of, I still consider myself doing paintings as more like a, how paintings interact in a space. So this is a large-scale installation where I used canvas, dipped it in epoxy, made it hard, and had a sculptural formation, which was like the, in the installation in the space. So very important for those installations I did at the time, they were all very temporarily, so they were only existing for the time for the show, and then I had to destroy them myself. You can go for the next one. Yeah, this is the back side of it, so you can see that light of color is reflecting into the space. For me, it was important that, um, that there was no one way of looking at it. Like you had to go through the piece and through the painting to really explore it. It was more about exploring it than to actually see it from one angle. I had seen so many shows and so many things and I, was, I kind of realized that I was scanning art. I was only looking and like looking at the next and like I had this inner picture of it, which I wanted to go against. So I was like, okay, I have to create something where it's more, you have to go through it, experience it, and um, yeah, find, find your own way of looking at it. You can go for the next one. This is also, I, like I'm still very close at that point to painting because I'm using canvas here. It's actually a big stretcher bar. This is very big, it's like 20 feet high. And um, <coughs> yeah, you, it, it's all visible. You can still see there's a very close relationship to the painting. And I used enamel, there was a reflection that you could see yourself in. And, and the space would reflect itself into the into the, the paintings. The next one. And then I slowly started using other materials like colored foils, like really things I would find anywhere. I would kind of integrate into my painterly approach. Yeah. This is an outdoor piece, um, which I had been more and more interested in, like doing things not inside a gallery space anymore, but just like reaching out anywhere. This is like a sculpture which in, in Germany it's very popular that people collect bottles. It's almost like a profession because there's a lot of refund on it and you can actually make a little extra money. And in public spaces like in, in train stations, like you find a lot of people like looking everywhere. So I made the sculpture which was actually like thought, like thought to be like, oh, I can put my bottle in here and someone else can take it. Almost like a, like a, a bin, but like a, a use, useful bin or something. Next one. Next one. Next one. And in the, in the later pieces, I've been um, almost like building spaces, again, where like color is a, a, a very important um, factor in all of them, but al also like using them as al almost like a laboratory space. So this is like, um, I just built the frames and I built the space, but inside it was really like for me testing and doing things and like everything seemed to become like part of my work. Like if I wouldn't literally call one piece like, oh, this is, this is a piece of art, but in the connection of the installation, it would become like something. So I realized the process in my work is very important. Like one thing leads me to the next and this is gonna go for that. And so a little bit of testing materials is all, it's all gonna be part of it. Next one. Yeah, you can 
see collecting stones, collect, collecting things bec became part of this piece, which was leading me to a bigger installation or a bigger piece I was doing in Italy last year, which will come later on. Next picture, please. Yeah, here I was testing pigments and resins and putting them on a on a light box. It was more like really like trying to figure out what material means and what it color, especially the color as material, like pigments coming from stone, me dealing with, with stone, everything kind of like became part of that. Next picture, please. Yeah, because I had, um, I had visited Italy, Carrara, where the white marble comes from, and I had taken this picture because someone had brought me to see a quarry. And I had this sitting in my studio in New York, not having a window or looking at this picture, I kind of felt like maybe I had, I, I had like this vision of doing something with it. So I did this Photoshop sketch. And I kind of liked the idea of this fictionality about it, or maybe this is real or this is not real, but literally a month later I got invited to go to Italy and do the exact thing. I mean, I got invited to do a residency there and work with marble, and I was like, oh, I know what I want to do. I want to paint like the surfaces of a of a quarry, like using it as a three-dimensional canvas. And um, what was very important for me, or what I really liked about it, was that I wasn't wasting material anymore as before. Before I was creating huge large-scale installations, but I destroyed them myself, and I almost every time I, I brought them to the dumpster and I like threw them out again. And it made me really aware of like being really like wasting, <laughs> constantly wasting, <laughs> while I was trying to create something really beautiful. So here I was like really interested in like using an active quarry. So they were still working on it. They were still, they're still cutting there. The, the material is going to be the material afterwards again. And it's just my use for a certain time. So it was temporary time. Yeah, this is then how it ended up being. And it was really interesting for me because in a way I, I really came back to painting again like more literally than I had ever before with my installations because I was totally reacting to colors around me, to the sky, to the, some of the colors that were already existing in the stones, flowers around, and it became like a huge three-dimensional painting you could walk through. Can you do the next one? And the next one? Yeah, like this orange, for example, I picked up because the orange was actually already existing in the stone. The next one, please. And the next one. And it was, it, it was a round-shaped um, quarry, almost like an amphitheater. So it was really amazing because the light would travel through, and every time of the day it would just look, look very, very different there. Next one. Yeah, this is actually, this is Joe Mark, so you get a sense of scale. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, this was like the first collaboration we actually did together, and it was really interesting because just the two of us worked in there. We had like, we had one piece of a, a truck, which was like our cherry picker, and I was up there working, and he was maneuvering me around. I think it was, and yeah, it was, it was an ama amazing experience because you're like outside all day, no one is around you, and it's like you have the biggest studio you can ever imagine. <laughs> and the wall, like, I, I was like searching for pigment for a very long time because I had to use something that was environmentally like non-hazard. So I found like a water-soluble pigment, and yeah, so it's can it, it's slowly disappearing. It's still halfway there and halfway covered, halfway taken off. Next one, and the next one. And the next one. Um, and then dealing with, maybe go for the next picture and we go back to that again. Yeah. And the next one. And the next one. Yeah. This is um, like coming back then, back to New York, back to my studio with no lights and no windows. I was really depressed. <laughs> But at the same time, I had a lot of a lot of footage. I had like a lot of documentary about the whole process, and I started to look at them. And I used started using all these images, and I kind of like reintroduced like an like some an image into my work. And I was using all these photographs, but like I had the feeling that they couldn't be colorful anymore. <laughs> they had to like I had to reduce their 
their realness because the, the document the documentary about the photograph was so was strange to me because it was really about experiencing it. So um, I made this large scale printouts like out of a very ordinary printer. Again, I was trying to like use the simplest material I can use, like anywhere I can go, I can use a printer and I just print them out and I can create a large image out of anything. And then I was lighting it from behind. And the next one. And also um, I was collecting a, a lot of materials in the quarry, like this metal part inside the concrete block. The concrete block is like I build around it, but the metal part I was, I was finding in the quarry. There was like things left over they use for cutting the, the huge block of marbles away. And they were like sculptures already for me, but I kind of wanted to transform them into something else. The next one. This is a piece which is temporarily in, in New York in a sculpture park, where again, I'm like, yeah, I'm using concrete and creating like a weird land cut, kind of imaginary like layers of sediments. And um, I'm putting this frame around because the moment I'm interested in like containing the white landscape again into like a smaller box maybe and make, maybe have some miniature landscapes in happening or something. Next one. I think that's maybe it, yeah. I think we can stop here. That's a good end. Okay? Thank you. Thank you.